Growing up, my goal was to become a mountain man, beaver trapper like John Coulter, wandering the mountains, living by the skin of my teeth. Life turned out to be more complicated than that, but I still pursue this ancient discipline as I chase fur for hats and mittens and meat for everything ranging from beaver thigh confit to simple pot roast. The best place for this is where beavers are causing problems for landowners by destroying timber and plugging up irrigation systems. Such is the case with this small ranch near the famed Yellowstone River, where me and my buddy Seth are gonna help out by helping ourselves to a small share of the furry nuisance. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do it. You know, it's said that uh, no animal besides man, besides human beings, alter their environment as much as beavers do. The coolest, baddest Americans from American history, from my perspective, are the beaver trappers. Bad of the bad. Yeah. And they were possibly trapped this, right? This, oh, dude. The spot. Yeah. Jim Bridger walked this creek. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, this is his zone, man. Yeah. He's up and down here all the time. John Coulter was up and down here all the time. That's awesome. Yeah, you're in the heart of like real beaver country. So right here is where it hooks back right here. Uh -huh. Then hooks around. So he kind of owns half of this. Half of this little wooded patch. Right, let's check it out. What's the thing you think you learn most from trapping? How to read sign. That's exactly what I was gonna say, man. There's beaver tracks. There's little subtle things about like oh, yeah. caster mounds, right. den entrances. You gotta learn about the little travel routes. And when a beaver's swimming along the edge of a river, like where he kind of ducks in and doesn't duck in and gets channeled through. There's drag marks in the mud here where the They've been hauling brush down to the dam. You see this dam they had built. Water is their refuge, you know, water is safety for a beaver. When a beaver builds a dam, it allows access to food by bringing water closer to food, and getting food closer to water, and they like to be in the water. The only thing it does is it creates depth, because in the winter when stuff freezes, you know, you'll get two feet of ice, three feet of ice. They need a big, deep hole, so they'll sometimes excavate out and make a, make a pond eight feet deep so that all winter they can exist underneath that ice and have room. You'd be using three kinds of devices. Footholds, snares, and conibears. Maybe we'll make, you know, probably less than 20. And if we get a handful of them, that'd be great. If we get fewer than a handful, I'll take it. If we get zero, that's a bummer. Let's do one of those 330s here. 330? Yeah. This right here is classic modern day beaver trapping. Because we're using a conibear. These come in different sizes. There's 110, which is like standard mink and muskrat. There's a 120, which could be used for pine martin. Then you get like a 220, raccoons and otters. And 330 is just like the beaver trap. If you're going to use one tool to catch beavers, that's the one you want. They're feeding all up in here and, and, and totaling out that island of trees. They're cutting it bad. There's like some digging and dens over here. They'll excavate and create channels in places that don't have them. They'll make channels like this deep, this wide, wherever they want to go. If they wanted to get up to that willow patch, they'll excavate a channel that leads all up in there and they can use it as a marine highway, you know, to pull the willow in and out. Now, I like trapping beavers, but I'm anything but anti-beaver. They do amazing things for their environment, from generating willow growth, improving water quality, and building great fish habitat. But sometimes things get a little out of hand, and you run into a landowner who desperately wants some assistance in at least thinning out the numbers. Let's get that, let's grab that steak right there.
the landowner here was telling me that half the time you come down here, there's beavers lolling around in this little inlet right here. Here we're making a little thing called a scent mound set. But what we're doing is taking advantage of their territoriality here. So beavers will build a little thing like this. They'll build a little mound of mud and they'll secrete. They have a gland called castor glands here and here. And they'll secrete an odor to mark their territory. So this is the entrance to this little inlet and we're gonna put a different beaver's caster. We're gonna put his caster on here. And that's gonna cause the, the territorial resident beaver to be like, who the hell is this? He's gonna to wanna to come up and check, see who's been hanging out in his zone. And we're gonna have a set here for him. So what we're gonna do is rig up a cable. And we're gonna anchor one end of the cable here and one end of the cable out deep. This is called a one-way slide. Real simple device. You can make it by folding the washer in half and drilling it or just take a little piece of angle iron. So you go. When the beaver comes, steps in there, runs the slide down and runs down deep water, kills him. So, these are valuable, like sometimes beaver fur prices will be low and caster prices will be high. And they use it for lure making, but it used to go into all kinds of like homeopathic remedies. Perfume, it all smells like perfume. perfume, yeah. Like in a couple weeks, I bet, if you walked along here, this whole river would just stink like caster as they get more aggressive in the breeding season. Trappers are a dying breed though, man. I remember reading in my home state, in Michigan, that every year the average age of a trapper goes up one. Really? <laughs> what do you think that is? So few people. I think it's just the amount of work that goes into it. Yeah. People don't want to work anymore. It is hard. You can see up here, this is one of the areas that's just getting totally destroyed by beavers. We're knocking all the trees down. This is basically what Daniel Boone trapped with. It's called a double long spring because it's got two springs right here and they're long, not coiled. And you got a pan, trigger, and a dog. You press the springs, open the jaws up. Take your trigger. We're going pretty slow, we'll speed up. Snares are typically set at beaver runs or trails or at the bases of slides. They're made up of a cable with a sliding lock that constricts around the neck or the body of the animal. In this state, snares need a breakaway device that'll come apart if it catches a larger mammal like deer or cattle. Set properly, snares can even be used to hold a beaver uninjured and can be used in relocation projects where managers are trying to reestablish beavers in habitats where they've been extirpated or severely reduced in numbers. I did a whole assortment of trapping when I lived back in Pennsylvania, but it's the first time that I beaver trapped. What was the main thing you trapped? The main thing was raccoons, fox, and coyotes. Every once in a while I'd get permission on the spot that had rats, muskrats, muskrats. Yeah. but um, yeah, most of, most of it was all raccoons and fox and coyotes. Yeah. Did you make some pretty good money when you were doing it or was the fur price is low? There was two years when I was in high school doing it where I was getting like 40 to 50 bucks for a nice raccoon. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, getting like 50 or 60 for a, a gray fox. Really? Yeah, but then it was only like two years and it dropped right off. Yep. Man, it's just, it's amazing, like, how many things depended on beavers. Oh, they're super important. Yeah. How many think we're gonna catch? At least four. At least four? That's what I'm guessing. 
It's a high number, but. I'm guessing zero. Really? Yeah. Why not? It's you true. did all the work, say zero, it's then true. like catch one, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, it's true. Four, I like that, man. Four is good. One of those caster mound sets over there got sprung, but nothing got hooked. Nothing. Oh. What's up with that? Is that empty too? Yeah. I'm not seeing a trap in there. Hey, flat tail. <laughs> I'd be by the toe. Yep. Man, that's awesome. First one. Caster mound set, man. Mountain Man special. That's cool. Oh, right there's one. Is that a scrat or a beaver? No, that's, that's, that's a, beaver. a beaver. And you can see how this set works. Like, rather than be out in the fast current, beavers tend to choose cruise the side where, you know, there's barriers along the bank, which makes the current be slow. So rather than fighting that, they just cruise along the edge. And here you got like this little island, which forms a little pinch point. And then it's deep, so it's too deep to really do any good. But right here, some of the bank collapsed and it made a shallow spot. So he's cruising the edge, gets wedged between the island and the bank. If he's swimming underwater, he gets pushed up by this chunk of collapsed bank and passes right through, passes right through this little spot here into it. 330. Small beaver though. Like beaver pelt sizes, if you're selling, if you're like trapping commercially to sell beaver, it'd be like small, medium, large, blanket, super blanket, or you get into like X's. Super blanket being Freaking huge beavers. Then you're talking like 60 pound beavers, you know. And there's a big one. That's a good sized beaver there. I knew we'd have a bunch of them. <laughs> you know, uh, out here you get these reddish beavers. In Michigan, you see that on the younger ones, they get big, they get just like this glossy chocolate. What's the market like? They're good. They're valuable beavers. They, they like, when the market's they like the up, yeah, chocolate the chocolate beaver. ones are good. But most most beaver hides go to wool felt. Same way in the oh, old really? days. Yeah. And like during the mountain man era, that's what they were doing. They're making they're making felt out of that underfur. Interesting. Yeah. It's nice stuff. Yeah. I've never skinned a beaver. So you ring them around the legs. I thought you used to flush them. I, yeah, I used to fl I used to flush a bunch of them. Guys would bring them in. They'd bring them in. Sell them green? Yep. Never whole, never, never in the round. Nope. Did you guys use those terms? Yep. In the round being like nothing done to it? Yep. Green being skinned, but that's it. Yep, and then. Straight up. Yeah. Yeah, beaver's the only thing you skin like this. Yeah, everything else. Yeah, is... most fur bearers are called tube skin. 
The beaver just skin them and flush them like in a little circle. That's a beaver that's very small. You can't make a hat with him. Yep. There we go. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's nice. What I used to do is I'd take it like this, fold it leather on leather, roll it up, freeze it, then thaw them out before the fur auction and bring all those in like that and not, not do them myself. Yep. I kind of regret it now. I'm not learning how to do it better. Fleshing them. Beavers are tough. Oh, I think it's the hardest thing, right? Yeah, a lot of hard gristle on them, especially on that back. That's a nice big beaver hide, though. That's a nice chunk of meat. Oh, yeah, it's like, it tastes... When we started doing, we put it in a crock pot in the morning with carrots and potatoes and just make pot roast, man. That's awesome. Come back from hunting or trapping or whatever and just eat the beaver meat. We love it.